Hello listeners and welcome back to Bridging the Gap Acer HR Conversations. I'm your host Arigwa Shakil Ahmed and today we delve into a topic that intertwines two global phenomena, climate change and human reproduction. The episode title might have given it away, Warming Wombs, How Climate Impacts Pregnancy Outcomes. Sit tight, grab your headphones and let's navigate this enthralling topic together. Today, we are privileged to host not one, but two amazing guests. Please welcome Dr. Zafar Fatmi, Professor and Section Head, and Dr. Suhail Lakhani, Senior Instructor, both from Aachen University. Thank you so much for joining uh, today. So before we um, delve deeper into our main topic, um, let's set the foundation for our audience. Um, so sir, I would like to ask uh, our very first question. What is climate change? Yeah, the climate change is something which is being talked about a lot these days. Everybody is talking about climate change. You, you name, you know, social scientists, you name climate scientists, you talk about health scientists, everybody is talking about climate change. Um, unfortunately, uh, many do not understand the overall concept, but, you know, uh, the climate change which is uh, more readily associated are like floods, um, you have droughts, you have, you know, these extra precipitation or heavy precipitation. So these are the things which are associated with it, which is correct in that sense. But these are the tip of the iceberg because the more disruptions, a more severe uh, impact climate change is having is indirectly. Like um, how heat is transforming the biological processes how heat is uh, transforming the chemical processes, how uh, climate change is impacting air pollution, how climate change is in affecting the water cycle, how the climate change is impacting the agriculture. And over, uh, on top of that, how climate change is affecting the social and you know demographic factors, which is totally unknown or relatively less known and less evidence are available mm -hmm. and that's where i think and that's why i say the 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 we touch the tip of the iceberg of the climate change and the overall impact is less seen and that's where we need more evidence and um, you know more actions as well mm -hmm. right so um to better understand the context um let's trace a bit more about it. So how has the climate evolved in like recent decades? Yeah, that's what I was talking about. So the climate uh, change is a longer term change. So uh, it's not weather pattern or, this, uh, or, you know, the variability in weather which we see every year or every other year. This has been happening maybe 100 years ago as well, or maybe pre-industrial area as well. So that is not climate change. The climate change is a constant change in temperature and constant change in you know, weather pattern, which is happening um, maybe last 60, 70 years. And it, the, the, the frequency of floods has increased. So the frequency of floods, when you say has increased over time, so you have to have data, not just, not just the last decade, but maybe last three decades or four decades in order to confirm that. So it's not year-to-year -year variability which we actually should associate it with climate change. This is this has been there before, but uh, the constant increase and there has been a rapid increase in the temperature, as well as these frequencies of these manifestation of climate change. We call it in the last decade. Mm -hmm. Right. Thank you so much for answering, sir. So now zooming in our central theme about uh, pregnancy and climate, um, are pregnant women particularly like, you know, vulnerable to the effects of like climate change? Yeah. So again, um, you know, if I go back like 40 years ago or 50 years ago, so the climate change was associated with polar bear. So polar bear dying in the Arctic oceans and nobody thought that, you know, the humans are dying also because of the climate change. And that's where we have remained disconnected with climate change issue for quite a while. And then in, in the two, after the 2000, there has been more awareness among the general population. 
But even then, we talked about the vulnerable, like the elderly, the old people first, and say the old people are dying because of the hot temperatures and extreme weather events. And the young children are dying because of, so those are the vulnerables we first touched, and there a lot of research and evidence was gathered around that. More recently, uh, the focus was on all, also on pregnant women, which is a very vulnerable population as well due to climate change, because they, these pregnant women have a newborn baby associated with them as well. So, um, and the, the, the physiological changes they go through during pregnancy make them much more vulnerable to the impact of climate change. See, metabolic rate, just to talk about the metabolic rate uh, increases during pregnancy, which generates, in, you, know, temp, um, you know, which generates the heat within the body itself mm -hmm. among the woman, and then you have an outside heat. So you understand, how the double effect is impacting the woman herself, but also the newborn baby. Right. So moving to um, Suhail, um, Suhail, I would definitely expand on that thought, uh, what Dr. Zafir just said. Um, so how are um, climate changes impacting pregnant women? So if we see climate change and its effect on pregnant women, it's, I think, bifolded. So you have some direct effects and some indirect effects. So talking about the direct effects, we have seen, the literature has shown us that it has increased preterm births, uh, it has given rise to small for gestational ages, it has led to uh, still births, and a quite high percentage of 9 to 16 percent has been observed with all these adverse pregnancy outcomes. But not just the direct effects, it also has those indirect elements like floods and hurricanes if we talk about, it limits your access to your prenatal and antenatal care. It also hampers your normal day-to-day -day activity and your eating habits. It contaminates your drinking water mm -hmm. and literature has shown that around 7 to 8 percent of the water that we are drinking has impact on the pregnancy outcomes. The nitrates, the water pollutants are causing a big difference in the uh, ratio of the pregnancy outcomes. Mm -hmm. So, and drilling down into like specific effects, um, how does the heat affect pregnant women? So, uh, I was recently reading a report by the United Nations and it says that since the last decade, around 1.1 degrees Celsius uh, has been the change in the global temperature of this globe. So if we see that, uh, and as I mentioned, the adverse pregnancy outcomes related to wheat, so that means the risk associated with climate change has been increasing with, we, we just saw that every one degree rise gives a seven to eight folds increase in the uh, outcomes of these adverse outcomes. So I think the pregnant woman is becoming more and more vulnerable as the climate is changing and heat is evolving. Mm -hmm. So with the challenges on like view, uh, it's crucial to discuss um, solutions, right? Um, so what strategies can pregnant women adopt to adapt to reduce these climate related risk? So uh, recently CDC has suggested some uh, mitigation strategies. Uh, they're not very specific to pregnant women, but of course it can always help them. Mm -hmm. So we talk about wearing uh, thin clothes, uh, we can always talk about staying hydrated uh, with water and other fluids. Uh, we can avoid uh, going into the, uh, uh, going for the outdoor activities when there is high temperature. We can just save it for some cooler times. Uh, we can try and minimize our outdoor activity. We can apply sunscreen to avoid the heat exposure. So these are some very basic things that, and obviously we can use fans and air conditioners where applicable. Right. So, thank you so much for answering that question. Um, so, lastly, as we wrap, our, uh, wrap up our conversation, um, I would want to know your concluding thoughts um, on this topic. So, I mean, uh, first of all, uh, there are uh, things which we need to do. There are three things, I would say. First is the policy change. Um, we need to look at the policies, uh, like the technology policy, the um, you know uh, population policy uh, the um, 
uh, you know, solar energy policy. So these three policies I'm targeting, the other policies also, primarily these three policies impact the climate change. So we need to review those in each of the countries, regionally and globally, in order to have any impact on climate change. So not just policies, obviously policies has to be implemented with some population awareness. So the second arm is the awareness of the population mm -hmm. because it has to be implemented at the household level, at the community level, at the district level, at the, at the you know, provincial level. Right. So all those uh, policies needs to have an aware population. So awareness is the second arm. And the third arm of this is the service delivery. So when we talk about you know, change in you know, energy, and we're talking about change from fossil fuel to solar energy, then there has to be some services available in order for to facilitate the population to have that transition. Right. And if you don't have that, you have policy, you have awareness, you don't have services. You're talking about electric cars, for example. So you bring electric cars, but you don't have recharging, uh, you know, uh, booths. So it will not work. So you need to have these three arms to gather the policies awareness as well as the services in order to uh, make it function. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So uh, now hold on your seats uh, as we are diving into a rapid fire questions. Um, Dr. Zafir, you got 10 seconds to answer these questions. Are you ready? Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. So the first question is um, deforesting or reforesting? Obviously reforesting. Okay, uh, agriculture or industry? We need both, but uh, industry. All right, heat mitigation or, or contraception? Heat mitigation. Thank you. Um, public transport or private transport? Private transport is detrimental, so public transport. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> shield or exposed strategies? Um, shield. Uh -huh. So, contraception or small vulnerable babies? Contraceptions. Wealth or health impact? Health impact. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Zafir, for joining us today. So, I'll move back to you for a rapid fire questions. Um, so, short term or long term effects? Uh, long term effects. Okay. New or old research? New research. More or fewer challenges? always fewer. So thank you so much guys for uh, joining us today. As the earth heats up, its impact touch every part of our lives. Today's exploration of warming wombs highlights the deep interconnection of life on our planet. By addressing these issues, we protect both the planet and well-being of future generations. Until we meet again, I'm Ariba Shakil Ahmad and you're listening to Bridging the Gap, HRHR Conversations. Stay safe.